Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp, and what are we talking about? The best stand, 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 best steak sandwich ever. Yeah, I'm talking about a filet. Not only are we gonna show you how to make it, but we're gonna give you tips and tricks how to cook that filet, that beef tenderloin, to where you don't ruin it, where you don't mess it up. Cause if y'all ain't looked around, stuff is high at the grocery store now. So we're gonna walk you through there, show you how to get the best cook on it. Don't get no better than the best steak sandwich. Well, folks, we shoot in early of the morning. It is supposed to be 107 degrees before you stand by Bertha today. So, but I be having my vintage shirt on. Got these little vent holes in it right here. Nice. Got two shirts on because you'll sweat through that first one. But the good folks at Ariat keep me looking cool all day long. They do. And you can be going down there to the little link below to check out some of my favorites from the Ariat folks. You'll be looking just as good as I am and staying cool. And the star of the show, the beef. You've heard Arby say it. We got the beef. No, they don't have the beef. I've got it here with me. They're going to come looking for it after this recipe, but this is where it starts. I bought the whole tenderloin. The tenderloin, why do they call it tenderloin? It is a muscle that is under here, this backbone down in here, that does hardly any work at all. And if you don't work a muscle, what happens to the muscle? It becomes really good and tender and oh, so nice and sweet. I'm so sorry that y'all didn't get to see this other half of it, but me and Shan and the pups eat the other half the other day for the 4th of July. So the filet would be cut out of the center of this, and we've left this enough on here to get this steak sandwich built today. Now, you walk up to that butcher case and you see them filets, and they're like six ounce or eight ounce, and they're already in a little Cryvac deal there, certified Angus beef. And sometimes it is a little cheaper if you'll buy that whole tenderloin and then you can just cut the steaks you want out of that filet. So I'm just gonna come back in here, slice this off to where we have more of a uniform piece of meat. And y'all have seen me do steak this way to where we take lime juice and we put on there cause the acid's gonna break down muscle connective tissue. This is a tenderloin of filet. There is no need for none of that today, folks. So all we're gonna do is take our original seasoning and we need to season well because so many times folks under season overcook. You need to let this filet come to room temperature, I believe. A lot of folks are gonna disagree with me. That's gonna give you a more even cook time. Now room temperature out here today may be like 94 degrees. It ain't gonna be that. But we're gonna take that out of that ice box. We're gonna let it set till it warms up a little. Our cook times will be more even. I'm gonna take a white onion and then just slice plumb through, let them fall. We'll separate them rings out when we get it over there in that stargazer skillet. This one here, frisbee. So we'll put that in there. What? Salt. I'm talking about maybe a little over a tablespoon. That's gonna help them onions get some of that moisture out of them. Just let them sit there and soak about, I'd say 10 minutes. Bertha is hot, the sun is peeking over the hill, things is fitting to heat up. We have got us some good mesquite in there. Now, if you're gonna do this on the grill or the smoker at home, you need to preheat that thing to where you're sort of indirect heat and get it hot. I'm talking 400 degrees. But first, let's caramelize them onions. Well, we got some butter. Let's just move it right over here to the direct flame. Add a little olive oil we are. Them onions, you can see, have made a little water, they have. Make sure that you drain that off of there. We're not gonna rinse them. You just need to drain that moisture off of them. Go ahead, chunk them in there. Now, I'm gonna let this cook here over this really pretty intense heat for about four or five minutes and really until them onions begin to break up. Well, been on about five minutes here. You can see them onions have begun to take on a little color, but they've sort of separated from them rings a little more and got a little softer. So if you're at home, turn it down to about medium low. Go ahead and put your lid on it. Bertha does not have medium low. That is the best lid that I can find to fit on this skillet. We're gonna go ahead, ho, oh, move her right down here to where they can just sit and simmer. I want you to see where Mage is. It's 82 degrees right now and Mage is standing by the fire. 
Mage is a warm weather pup, he is. But let's talk about this special sauce that we're gonna put on there. And I want something that's really gonna not cover up any of the flavor that we have in the beef, but enhance that beef. Now we started out with some good Duke's mayonnaise. Anything that we use today will be listed down there in the little recipe link below. French's onion dip, uh-huh. Some Dijon mustard or spicy brown mustard, whatever you got. You gotta have some of that Worcestershire sauce, however you wanna say it. Oh, I like that stuff. Let's give it a little more. But folks, we gotta have a little kicker in there too. Something that really just makes beef stand out. And what is that? Horse radish. Now, if I can get it out of there. Now, when you get that mixed up really well, smooth as it can be, coarse ground black pepper. Go ahead and just throw you some in there. And if you wanna do this deal, remember Emerald, a long time ago that was cooking on TV and he'd say, bam -o! and just throw it in there like that. I don't think it was bam -o. Well, something like bam, that. Bam, I think. It was close. Now, I like to make this while them onions are sitting there caramelizing, and then I just put it right back in the ice box and let it chill till time to use it. Well, we've been on about 10 over here on this side. Them onions is beginning to get some really good color, as you can see. I just want to put them back over here on this side for about five minutes over some medium heat, see if we can cook the rest of that fat out of it, and we'll just let them onions just sit there and do their thing. Well, we've been on five, and you can see that good, rich color in there. So at this time, we have some garlic cloves and some thyme. Raker in here. Make sure you get it all if you can. Give it a stir. We don't want that garlic to burn, so we're just going to get it mixed up over here, let it cook for just a minute, and then just pull it off that fire, put that lid back on it, let it set. All them flavors that are coming out of there are jumping at you right now saying, Oh my gosh, this is delicious. Folks, we gotta have some flame cause I want it licking up there to where we can actually get us some good char on that meat. So either crank that grill up to where you're closer to that fire or add some more wood. But don't be doing this in the house. I want you to get outside and get the most out of it. Now, if y'all are new here, this is my trusty stove, Bertha, the new and improved model there. Hey, the good folks at Hasty Bake teamed up with us and they make these. A grill will fit all the way across the top. It is what has a great heat in the summertime and winter, but it feels a whole lot better in the wintertime, it does. We cleaned and oiled the grate we did. The fire is right at what I call hot it is. It's going to sizzle when we put it on there, but a lot of times you see me start on indirect heat. Not today. We're turning it around backwards. We are backing up in reverse. We are going to sear it down here really good. Ain't that a beautiful thing where you can see that just smoke drifting off there? Now, if you're doing this on the grill, do not shut the lid any time at this because you need them flames to be licking up there, giving it a kiss all the way around. We're trying to get us a good char all the way around to where we lock in that flavor and get that good caramelization of that meat and seasoning. Folks, I have thrown many a steak on a grill. Now, usually on ranches, and we set up camp on Sunday, was already really customary most of the time. Sunday evening, we go in, take the wagon, pull it to camp there. All the cowboys would come in, help you set up camp. Now, really their works don't start till the next morning, but them folks was gracious enough to help us set up, so I always start out with what? Steak night. That's what it's about. They come in there, it might be some of them a new crew, some of them we've cooked for many, many times, but we want them folks to feel like family and we want to start off with a bang and what better way to do it? Throw that steak on the grill. It don't take but about maybe two to three minutes a side depending on how much flame you got coming up through there. I don't want you to mash it, just roll it around there, get everybody, then we'll turn it up on the end, get both ends seared well. We're just gonna move the fire to the other end I'm gonna show you a little cowboy ingenuity and put a lid on it. At this point in time on your grill, you would move down here to the indirect side and we're probably gonna go 10 to 12 minutes or until that internal temperature reaches 100. But you're screaming, that is too rare. But folks, then we're gonna pull it, wrap it in some foil, let it set, that temp will come up. This steak is not meant to be cooked over that. So we're gonna to have to rig us up a grill right here that has a lid, so what do we got? We got a dish pan that is gonna cover this. Move all your flame to the other end. 
there you have it. We are trapping the smoke down here under this end, giving it some flavor that mesquite is. Don't be afraid to go ahead and get that temp gauge out. Folks, this costs a lot of money. You want to make sure. Check it every once in a while. You may want to roll it around. You don't have to, but we want to reach that internal temperature of 100 degrees. Oh my gosh, smoke. We're going to go ahead and pull this rascal. We're about 101 degrees right here. We're going to go ahead and put him in some tin foil. Let him sit there and rest about 10 minutes. Got us some hoagie rolls. And if you got you one of them good beef steak tomatoes, one of them great big ones. I picked this one out of the garden. Wasn't as big as I wanted, but it's, oh, that beef steak has so much flavor. And we need to give them a what? A little heat. But also, get you a really good, some hoagie rolls. I like to use olive oil rather than just butter because I think it's going to give you a little crispier start there. Salt and pepper, and this is the side that goes down first, and I want you to give it a little mash when it gets there because we want that good toasting effect. It ain't going to take long, may be burnt before I get back. Them tomatoes, we're not cooking down to where we want them to fall apart. I just want to give them some grill marks, get them some char, let that sweetness come out in them, and we're gonna see what's happening right Ooh. Different tool. We gotta see what's happening here. Looky there, folks, that's what we're talking about. Now I wanna go ahead and toast this bottom up just a little. Folks, it is nearly steak time, it is. Finally, all this searching we did to find the best steak sandwich ever was right here in camp. Now, when you see me tint that with foil, I don't want you to just roll it up on foil. I want you to give it where it's got some air circulation. That steaming effect sort of takes place in there. We pulled it at 100. It warmed to 110 because we want this rare, folks. We do. Now, before we go any further, I had some help today. Sadie, she treed some raccoons down there somewhere. I don't even know where she's at, but come here, Biggie. There's your little bite of filet. Mage, you ever eat filet before? He says, I have now, Dad. Where is the Duker? He's right behind you. Duker, come get your bite, buddy. Come on. Be on camera. Duker says, I was hunting some shade. I don't know where to start, Shan. People got on to me one time because I took a bite right out of the middle. So I'll start on the end. I will. Mm. The flavors in there are something I can't really describe to you folks. It's just over the top. You, you get, first of all, I think really that bun has got that great crispness to it as you bite through there. And then you hit that beefsteak tomato that's got that char. And then your taste buds say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, pass the biscuits, amen, because what? We have got to the filet. So when you get this to where this is, you've had the one bite out of it. You have fed your three puppies. There ain't nothing of you left to do except just, this is what I call an elegant meal. So we're going to have elegant dancing. Strangers in the night, I see them glancing. Strangers in the night, they didn't get no steak. It's all for me tonight. Whew. Ain't much dancing, but folks, it's 98 degrees already. So, ultimate best ever steak sandwich you ever had in your life. Remember, everything that we use today will be listed down there below. And don't forget to check out the little link on the Ariat stuff to where you can be cool. As always, and with great honor, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp. We shall not ever forget you. We won't. Now, for the rest of you, I need you to come on in here really, really close. Everybody appreciated the great big hug last week, so I'm going to give you another one. I am. And God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best steak sandwich you ever had trail in your life.